Welcome back to every choices of channel. In today's class, we'll learn how to make this beautiful Canadian smoking ruffle on a dress. It's a very simple tutorial and it is beginner friendly. If this is what you like to learn, kindly stay tuned to the end of this tutorial. Thank you. So to make this smoking design, you need to determine where you want to place it. So this is just a simple dress and I'll be using that to illustrate where I want to place this on this dress, okay? So you, if you see the thumbnail where you will see that it's slanted on the hem line of the dress. So for me, for the longer part, I want it to be around 13 inches. So from my hem line here, I'm going to be measuring 13 inches upwards like this. And then I'm going to mark it. And then on the other side, I'm just going to be putting this design in front. So you can make it go around the front and back if you want. But for the purpose of this tutorial, it's going to be placed just at the front. And then on the other hem line here, which is the shorter one, I'll make it around 6 to 7 inches. And I'll note this. So after noting that now, I'll take my ruler and then I'm going to connect it in a diagonal form like this to form a slanting design. Okay, so once I slant it, I'll have something like this. So this is how the smoking design is going to go. So to cut this now on my main fabric that I'm going to be using for the design, I'm going to double the measurement that I have here. So this is the longest measurement for the length. I have 13 inches. So you can double this or triple it or just multiply by two and a half inches depending on how full you want it to be and the amount of fabric you have to work with. So if you are doubling 13 inches, that's going to give you 26 inches. So the length of the fabric you are working with is going to be 26 inches. We are still going to shape it to this lantern design later. And for the width, I'm going to be using the longest one also. And I have around 24 inches for the width of this M line. So you can double that too, or can just multiply it by 20 by two and a half. And 24 divided multiplied by two is going to give me 48 inches. So tentatively, I'm going to be using a length of 26 inches and a width of 48 inches. Okay, so I'll be illustrating that using this paper so that it can be visible before I transfer it to the fabric. So if I have this paper now, I'll assume that the width of this paper that from ear to ear is 48 inches and the length of the paper that's from here to here is 26 inches and i'm sure we understand how i came about these figures so now the next thing is to shape it remember to get these 26 inches we measured the 13 inches we multiplied it by two and then on this lower part here we, we made use of seven inches Okay, so if we multiply 7 inches by 2, it's going to give us 14 inches also. And if my 14 inches is around here, it means I'm going to be connecting from the 26 inches, the upper one here, to this place. And then I'm going to chop off the excess that I have here. I hope you understand that. This 48 inches, I got it by measuring the M line. The M line, the width of the M line gave me 24 inches and I multiplied it by 2, which gave me 48. And I explained that if you want it full, like I multiply it by 2 and a half or 3 inches. And then for the length, the longest length, the first length in it was 13 inches. I multiplied that by 2, 2 to give me 26 inches. But when I was drafting where I want the design to be, you will notice that it was slanted. So the shortest part, which was slanted from the 13 inches, I used 7 inches for it. And then I multiplied that by 2, 2 and it gave me 14 inches. So I just slanted from the 22 inches, 26 inches to the 14 inches and I have that. And then I'm going to be chopping that off so that we can draw out our pattern okay so after cutting this off now i'm going to be using a square of two inches by two inches for my canadian smoking and then i'm going to be drawing it on my paper now so this ruler is actually two inches in length so i don't need to measure it so you can see we have exactly two inches like this so from here i'll start marking my two inches I'll mark two inches. I'll 
both horizontally and vertically so i have two inches marked like this and then vertically i'm also going to horizontally i'm going to mark the two inches also like this to form a square of two by two inches so you can see how i'm marking this okay so i have this so the next thing now is to start noting how the pattern is going to be so you can see that the pattern is up here where whereas it's not that as long as what we have here so i'm just going to be manipulating it and then i'll start by drafting my square so here i'll omit this and then i'm going to draw another one here i'll leave the next line then on this line i'm going to draw this square i'll omit this one okay i want it to be on the same line so here i'm going to be drawing this here also i'm going to be drawing this and then the next one is going to be this so ignore this so the last one will be directly under this also i'm going to be drawing it like this then i'll omit the next row then this is also going to be directly under this then i'll draw it out like this and then this i'll omit the next line also this is going to be directly under this i hope you can see this pattern row okay so it's just drawing a slant line here we meet the next line draw another slant line then you ignore the next row then you move over to the next one but you make sure that this next slant line you are drawing they fall directly under each other like this so you completely ignore this row and then draw your slant line you ignore the next row and draw your slant line like that so now i'll be transferring this to my fabric now then bring it back to show us i'm sure we'll understand it better by the time i bring in the fabric okay so now i've drafted it on the fabric and i hope you can see it i just marked the slash lines the slant lines with the and you can see that they are directly under each other so let me just try to bring down the camera okay so you can see how i marked it it's just a space in between and the slash lines are directly under each other so the fabric is quite big and you can see the way it is slanted just like we illustrated it on the paper so now the next thing is to start tacking it on this slash lines that we have here and to tack it you just take your matching needle and thread like this and then you pick it up so the first one like this you're going to pick it on this side and then you pick the next one okay so you, can, you should actually leave all this space because you're going to use it to turn but i'm just going to do this so that we'll see what i'm doing so you you tack it and bring them together like this then after bringing them together you knot it to secure it so after securing it you move over to the next one and then repeat the same process so after tacking it i'm going to cut this half knot another tie and then i will I will sew this together, bring them together, and then not a tie again. So this is how you continue to do it till you reach, till you have successfully tagged everything. So I'll go and do all this now off camera. Then I'll bring it back to show us the result that I have and how we are going to be attaching this to our dress. Okay. okay so they've all been tacked now i can see this is the wrong side and before i forget you should do all your markings on the wrong side of your fabric so that this tacking will be on the wrong side and this is the right side of the fabric you can see the slanting effect that we have here and this is the m line so the next thing now is to start gathering it so i'm going to gather it back to this actual size that i have on my dress okay Remember, I started with 13 inches length here, then I slanted it like this. So here, I'm going to measure what I have here on the upper part. That is the slanted part. I'll measure what I have, and I have around, around 19 inches. So this 19 inches now, I'm going to gather this upper part to 19 inches. So I'll place it like this, take it to the sewing machine now, and then gather all this to 19 inches. 
You can either gather it. I'm gathering it because I want to add it directly to my fabric. If you don't want to add it directly to your fabric, you can use your actual pattern. This original pattern, yes, you can place it here now and then use it to as a guide for your gathering. Remember, we started with this original pattern of 13 inches by 40. So you just need to make sure you're 13 inches by 14 inches and then slant it and then you use that to gather it. Okay, so you gather it on that piece of fabric before you attach it to your dress. But I'm going to be gathering this directly on my dress. So now I'll take it to the sewing machine now and then gather the upper part to 15 inches and then I'll measure the M line also which is the lower part here whatever i have here i'm going to gather the lower parts to that measurement also and then here i have around 23 24 okay, so i have around 24 inches there and then this m line i'm also going to gather it to 24 inches then this side the longest part i'll gather it to the 13 inches that we started with and then this short part also I'm going to gather it to the seven inches that we started with. So when I finish gathering this, I'll bring it back to show us how I'm going to attach it. Okay, so I'm going to have to gather it. You can see my thread. I just run a gather stitch on each of those lines, then I pull them to their respective sizes. So like I said, the one that goes to this lantern side, this one was gathered to 19 inches. The one that comes like this was gathered to 13 inches. The one that came like this, that's the shortest length, was gathered to 7 inches. And the M line was gathered to the 24 inches we started with. So I just gathered each of them to back towards the, and then now I'm going to sew it. So you have to make sure that they fit into there. Yeah, you can see this is short. So this is the length of the shortest one and it's going to be here and this is the longest part which is 13 inches you can see it's longer than what I, okay so this is the length of the shortest one and it's just seven inches as you can see and this is the longest one which is 13 inches you can see that it is longer than what we have here so you can see it is longer than this so now i'm going to be sewing this to this and the way I'm going to sew it, I'm going to sew it in a way that it will conceal these rough edges. And like I said, you don't have to sew it directly to your fabric. I'm just sewing to my fabric and decide to cut exactly this shape out. This shape that you have here, you can cut it out on a separate fabric and then sew it on it to gather it before placing it on the fabric. I think I have a tutorial on that already on the channel. If you need it, I'll link it down below in the comment section. So now I'm going to sew this. And the way I will sew it, I'm not just going to sew it on it like this. You can also sew it on it like this if you are willing to put a trimming to cover up these rough edges. But I'm going to be folding it like this now. And then I'll go ahead to sew it following this slant line that I have. So after sewing it like this, I'll fold it back. Then I'll try as much as possible to manipulate this also. Fold it and sew it like this. Then I'll sew it. I will sew this side also like this. Then the M line, I'm going to sew it directly. And then I'm going to hem everything together neatly. And then if you are turning with lining also, you just turn it with your lining. So I'll be doing this step by step. And then I'll bring it to show. So the first one I'll be doing is this slant line. I'll go ahead now to the sewing machine. I sew this slant line, then bring it back to show us what it looks like before I continue. Okay, so I've, as you can see, I've gone ahead to sew it. And like I said, you can see the way I just sew it like this and they slant, it just slants down like that. So by the time I fold this over now, you will see that this side is neatly finished. Okay, I hope you can see what I'm doing. You can see that this side is neatly finished. So the next one I'm going to do now is this long part and this short part. So I'll find my way to sew it neatly also. You can see I am bending it. And then I'm going to take it to the machine now and sew like this. I'll do the same thing to the other side also. So after sewing it on both sides, I'm just going to sew down the M line. And then I'm going to use them to M each other. Okay, so you can see now I've sewn it inwards. The way I sew it is not going to show. You can see it's on both sides of the length. So when I drop it down, this is what I have. You can see what I have here. 
So let me turn it like this so that we can see it well. So now the next thing is to sew the hem line down. So I'm just going to pin it down to the hem line like this now and then sew it. Then I can use this now to hem everything together so that it can be neatly finished also. Or you turn it with a bias, then I'll take it to the mannequin so that we will see what we have. Okay, so this is what our Canadian smoking ruffle is looking like. And you can see how beautiful this is looking. So like I said in the tutorial, you can make it go around all the way to the back if that is what you want. But I just decided to stop mine around the front panel only. So this is the full view of the gown. I can see how lovely this is looking and it's really simple to make. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you enjoyed it, let us know in the comment section. Like, comment and subscribe to our channel. And I will see you in the next one. Bye. Bye.